After six months, Danish mission Dancon 15 is at an end. Dancon 16 now begins. The official handover is steeped in Danish military history, as incoming CO Colonel Kenneth Pedersen explains. The commander who's giving the flag away, he will not release it before uh, the other one has a firm gri grip on it. So it, command is never released. It goes from one person to the other one, so there's always a clear line of command. Mirroring Op Herrick, the Danish mission is changing. Just 300 personnel make up the new contingent, a 40% reduction, the biggest single country drawdown we've seen so far. The incoming and outgoing COs make clear the future focus of Danish operations. So we're drawing down just as the British do, but we still have sort of a, there's obviously the redeployment uh, issue that I have to deal with, and at the same time supporting uh, the NSF uh, shoulder to shoulder with the British. At the ceremony today, the new Danish ambassador to Afghanistan, who believes the efforts of his countrymen and women on the ground have enabled the diplomatic push. It goes hands in hand with the civilian uh, efforts uh, that, that we are doing in Kabul, the uh, civilian reconstruction and the development assistance. I think uh, that what the forces is doing here together with Great Britain forces, it's, it's really important. For many of these fresh troops, it will be their first tour of Afghanistan, and it's a time of adaptation and expectation. All the new impressions, uh, having to eat, uh, British breakfast every morning, uh, all the small things, it, it, and they're really anxious about getting out there and, and trying to do stuff, uh, trying to get uh, yeah, all, the, all the new jobs, they, they want to, to see and smell everything, they want to do anything, everything, um, so they're really anxious just to get started, I guess. The Danes bring a unique piece of kit to the party, this, the Leopard 2A5 main battle tank, and over the years in Afghanistan, it's really proven its worth. The Leopard is a 1,500 horsepower, 68-ton monster. Its 120mm gun packs a punch, and although tracked vehicles have fallen out of favour in Afghanistan, the Danes have exploited their benefits. In 2008, in support of the British infantry, they prevented the enemy outflanking the British by the Helmand River, and the MOD has said that Danish tanks were decisive in the recapture of Nadi Ali. In 2014, they continue to have a role. But I expect it to uh, be a huge asset for everyone down here when we uh, start closing the bases and so on. That is because when we deploy these uh, huge tanks that we got in overwatch positions, it tends to create a stable environment, let's say, that nobody wants to fight them so we can close the bases in a good order. As UK forces draw down, so will the Danish military, alongside where they've always been. Tim Cooper, Forces News, Camp Bastion.